Hey guys, how you doing? I'm on today on this 12 day of praise to share with you my testimony of how God delivered me from depression and hopelessness. Listen, I remember being in middle school, eighth grade year specifically, and I was going through like a deep depression. And I didn't really, I didn't really know much about God, but I remember my mom trying to talk to me and I was just sad, but I remember telling her no one can help me but God. Now, I don't know what made me say that. No, it could have been no one but the Holy Spirit because God was probably pursuing me at the time. But the depression was like, it was just I couldn't shake it. And I was trying to listen to music, but I was listening to like all the wrong music. I was listening to a lot of like Eminem and just a lot of like bad secular music. And I was like, man, this is making me feel worse. So I actually, for the first time during that year, I started listening to gospel music and I would just play it. I would just play it. And I played gospel music that entire year. And um, that year, I also started writing poetry. And what I saw was by the end of that school year, by the end of that academic school year, I was completely delivered from depression. Like, I don't know when it happened, but it just happened gradually over time. And I remember thinking, oh, snap, God delivered me from depression. And because God delivered me from depression, my I made a conscious decision after my eighth grade year that I'm going to pursue God because God delivered me. Like this thing is super real. I know that God is real. And, and it wasn't the first time I realized that God is real, but this was the first time that I saw the deliverance of God and the deliverance of God is what made me pursue God. And so when he delivered me from depression, when he delivered me from hopelessness, because I was like, man, what's the point of everything? If I could run away, I would, I would, I would have ran away, right? I would have, uh, if I could have dropped out of school, I would have dropped out of school. But my mom would not be going for that. So it didn't happen. <laughs> what, what, what is a little kid going to do, right? But it was like, I would go to school. I was like, man, what's the point of all this? Like, what's the point of being here? What's the point of getting this education what's what's there's no there's no purpose in any of this because i was really pursuing purpose i felt hopeless i felt hopelessness i felt purposeless and and that 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 year god gave me so much purpose like i found my purpose in god i started pursuing him that summer between uh, graduating from my eighth grade, um, graduating from eighth grade and going into um, high school, that summer I began to read like the Bible actively for the first time in my life. I started reading the Bible and I just started, my mind just started blown, being blown by God and who he is. And that from that moment, I've been pursuing God my entire life from that moment. And so I just want to speak to you that if you're feeling hopeless, if you're feeling purposeless, I want to encourage you that, yes, it's not you're not going to find that fulfillment in your job. You're not going to you're not going to find that fulfillment in your spouse, in your children, in success or what the world deems is success. You're not going to find that fulfillment in any of those things, but you will only find purpose. You will only find identity. You will only find satisfaction in God. And I thank God that he is all sufficient. I thank God that his grace is sufficient. I thank God that he's faithful and that he loves us and that he has created all of us with a purpose. He has created all of us with, with value. We have inherited value 
because God has created us. We are his workmanship, his handiwork, his masterpiece, depending on what translation of the Bible you read. But you have been bought with a price and God loves you with an everlasting love. And he has a good plan for you. It's a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, but, but a plan to bring you hope, to bring you peace, to bring you to an expected end, a future. And one of the most encouraging things to me is that the Bible tells us that God is the author and finisher of our faith. Meaning he is the one who writes our storyline. He is the one that has established our life, our story, our faith. That means that we all have a purpose and we all have a future. We all have a hope and our hope is in him. Our purpose is in him. Jesus is our hope of glory. And so I just want to encourage you. Don't give up. God loves you. Receive his love. Don't look to other things to find your hope, but find your hope in Christ. And so, Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you, God, for how you delivered me from depression and how I was able to find hope and purpose in you. I pray the same for your people, God. I pray the same for those who are listening to this. Lord, I pray, Father, that, 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 that you will cause them, oh God, to know that they can't find peace. They can't find satisfaction. They can't find joy in anything or anyone outside of you. Sex can't do it. Alcohol can't do it. The weed, the drugs, it can't do it. The, the, the pride can't do it in, in having a, a, a successful career, having money. All those things, the image can't do it. The social media can't do it. None of those things can do it. But Lord, you bring joy. You bring satisfaction. You bring peace. Lord, you are the one that brings all those things. Lord, I pray, Father, that they will pursue you with all of their heart. That they will see you, God, as the author and finisher of their faith that they will know you as their hope of glory, that they will know you, oh God, as their joy, as their strength. Lord, I pray that they will know you, oh God, the same way that you encountered me, the same way that you delivered me from the spirit of depression, the same way that you delivered me from the spirit of hopelessness. Lord, I pray that you will deliver your people and God, I thank you that, God, you are still a delivering God. I thank you, God, that everyone under the sound of my voice that is struggling with depression, struggling with anxiety, struggling with, with feeling hopeless. Lord, I thank you, God, that by the power of God, by the blood of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, their deliverance, oh God, is now. Their deliverance is now, Lord, I thank you, God, that they're not going into 2023 with the spirit of depression, with the spirit of suicide, with the spirit of anxiety, with the spirit of hopelessness, but they shall go into 2023 with praise. They shall go into 2023 with hope. They shall go into 2023 with joy, the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. They shall go in joy by the power of the Holy Ghost. They shall abound in hope in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, guys, before I close out on this 12 Day of Praise video, I want to let you know that there's no way that you can truly have joy outside of God. And if you're listening to this and you do not have a relationship with God, with the God, Jesus, Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. If you do not have a relationship with him, but you want to have a relationship with God, you want to experience 
God delivering you from depression. You want to experience God delivering you from hopelessness, delivering you from anxiety. Listen, when you follow God, it doesn't mean that your life is easier, right? It doesn't mean that God is meant to make you happy, right? The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them from them all. When you follow God, you have some guarantees. You have some guarantees that no longer do you have to live under the oppression of demons, depression, anxiety, fear, hopelessness. That's that's the money. You no longer have to live under that because Jesus said that he came to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus, for this reason, the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of Satan. If depression is in your life, if thoughts of suicide, of thoughts of, 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 of anxiety and worry and, and hopelessness, if all those things are in your life, that is a work of Satan. That is the work of the devil. And Jesus came. He was manifested for that reason to destroy the works of Satan. And he wants to destroy those works in your life. But the only way he can do that is if you give him your life. If you invite him to have a leadership and rulership and lordship over your life. If you accept him that he is the savior of your soul and, and, and you allow him to be the, the lord over your life. Meaning you turn away from all the things that you did before. You turn away from all the sins. You repent. You acknowledge that you have sinned against God and you repent and you give your life to God and you begin to read your Bible and you learn of the ways of God and you begin to adjust and live your life accordingly to the ways of God. Amen. And it means you do what he, he commands us to do. I promise you that Jesus being the hope of glory will fill your life with hope, will fill your life and your heart with peace. He will fill your life with joy. He will fill your life with blessings. If you are, if you commit to give him your life and to follow him and to, and to pursue him and to get to know who he is through his word and through prayer, I promise you your life will never be the same. It would never be the same. It would never be the same. And so I want you to repeat after me. If you want, if you want to give your life to God, I want to just pray with you. And the last thing I want to say before we pray is that salvation isn't a one-time thing. After you give your life to God, it becomes a process where he sanctifies you. He, he, he saves your soul. You have to renew your mind through reading the word. And so I just want to say this quick prayer before my uh, children crash the party. Uh, so, Lord, I just pray, Father, you can repeat after me. Lord, I pray, Father, that you will forgive me of my sins. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I have lived a life of sin, a life that was not pleasing unto you. Lord, I repent of my sins. And I want to, to give my life to you. I want you to be my Lord. I acknowledge that you died on a cross so that I can be saved. And so, Lord, I pray that today that you will save my soul, that you will be my Lord in the mighty name of Jesus, and that you will deliver me from the kingdom of darkness and that you will translate me to the kingdom of light where I will serve you all the days of my life. Give me the grace that I need, the empowering grace that I need to serve you, to read your word, to pray, to have a relationship with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. I'll see you guys on the next 12 day of praise. Amen.